There he is. <laughs> well, let me see here. Uh, might be short and sweet today, but don't get happy now. Don't get happy just yet. Uh, I want to look by the grace of God for a few moments into 1 Samuel chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. I hope I get these names right, but all right. First uh, Samuel chapter one, verse one says, now there was a certain man of Ramathaim, uh, Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, uh, Jeroham the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zup, and Ephraite, uh, and Ephraite, there you go. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was uh, let's see, Pinia, uh, Pinia, Panina, that's how you say that. And Panina had children, but Hannah had no children. <clears throat> and this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Eli was the priest, uh, Hophni, Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah uh, offered, he gave to Panina, his wife, and to all her sons and to and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And he, I mean, and her adversary also provoked her sore or greatly, for to make her fret or become discouraged, uh, because the Lord has shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better than uh, to thee than ten sons? Now her adversary, of course, will be the one with the children. I'm not going to say here and uh, speculate what she may have said, but, you know, uh, if you hear something like that over and over, if you don't have children but you want children, first off, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, uh, Panina, uh, Panina's was his wife for children. Because back then in that time, uh, people married mostly to have children. Hannah could not. So most likely, you know, I, it's just uh, a thought. Most likely he married Hannah first. That was the love of his life from the looks of everything. Uh, but she couldn't give him any children. The Lord had shut her up, so he went and got another wife uh, simply so he could have children. But his heart 
was toward Hannah. Now, there's something else we need to uh, be aware of from uh, uh, verse 1 down to 8. <clears throat> because a lot of people are not aware of this, or when this does come into play, uh, they don't know why. The first thing I see here is a godly woman, a godly mother, will face problems. We see her facing problems right here, but at the same time, she relies upon her God. We're going to see that in a few moments. She prays unto her God. We're going to see that in a, little, in a few moments. And there's a few other things. Now listen, church, a lot of people think we'll, t we'll actually say and begin to think and believe the same way that uh, Job comes to mind and his friends coming to try to help him and uh, uh, soothe him and put his mind at ease uh, because of everything coming upon him. And uh, eventually they begin to uh, think that, well, Job must have done something against God. And now maybe people think this with Hannah. But see, that's not the uh, reason at all. We're going to find out uh, quite a few things here. Let me uh, continue on with verse 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she, being Hannah, was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore, or much, greatly. Uh, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid concerning herself, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Doesn't mean she would never cut his hair or he'd never get a haircut, just would not shave him. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, that's the law of the Nazarite back then. Now, <clears throat> and it came to pass, verse 12, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli, which was the priest, he was a heavy man, by the way, uh, marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard, Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. Now, wouldn't that be kind of awkward to you uh, and to me if you was up here praying, you wasn't saying a word, but your lips were moving, and here come the preacher man accusing you, hey, are you drunk? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kind of weird, don't you think? Uh, huh? Yeah, yeah, and it's discouraging too, absolutely. Uh, but uh, th th this is how it really was. <clears throat> 14, and Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken uh, hitherto. Now, the, uh, the daughter of Belial, that would mean a wicked woman or a worthless woman. Somewhere is in that category, just so we know. She's like, don't count me for one of those. And then she let him know what she's doing. Verse 17, then Eli, Eli, yeah, Eli answered and said, go in peace. And the God of Israel uh, grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. 
And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Now, before I go any further, I just want to mention something. Uh, a godly mother also prays. She goes through trouble. Trouble will come her way, but a godly mother will also pray. And a godly mother, apparently she, I see that she has begun to trust God in what she has asked of him because her countenance was no more sad. She began to eat. Now, uh, the birth of Samuel. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to the, their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that uh, she bare a son, and called his name Samuel, and this is the reason, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah, uh, and his and all his house went up after uh, went up to offer rather unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. And Elkanah her husband said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou hast weaned him. Only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until uh, she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up to her uh, with her, with three bullocks and one ephra of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh and the child was young. Probably two or under. I don't think it takes uh, uh, too much longer to wean the boy, uh, if that long. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli, which of course is the priest, and she said, O oh my Lord, talking to Eli, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I ask of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord, as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. Now, I'm going to read the first two, <clears throat> or three, wh whichever, in uh, chapter two. <clears throat> and Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth, is, uh, my mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Uh, if you haven't seen what I've seen, uh, I actually wrote it down so I won't forget. <laughs> <clears throat> Number one, a godly mother we see will face problems. Nobody is above facing problems in this walkway of life. But see, Jesus reminds you and I over there when he was walking in the world 
Be ye of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And he said, those through the Apostle Paul, those that uh, live godly shall and will suffer persecution. Why will we suffer these things? Because Jesus did. They hated this man for no reason, without a cause. He gave them no cause. He gave them no reason, but they hated him. So, you know, of course, they're going to hate you and I if we are Christ-like. Now, so don't think it, and Peter said, "Don't I believe it was Peter, don't think it's some uh, strange things when these things come up on you. Uh, but be ye content and be happy. That's a lot of that, that's a lot of stuff right there that we have to actually learn how to do. Second, uh, what did Anna do when she was being uh, uh, when she was put through the shame, the humility, the mocking, the being made fun of? Uh, uh, because she had no children. The other woman, she had uh, ch children. She had sons and daughters. What did Hannah do? The first thing I seen that Hannah do, she went to God. She went to God in what? Prayer. So a godly mother prays. I'm not talking about any, just any woman here, any women. I, uh, this is speaking about godly, a godly mother. She prayed. And guess what happened when she prayed? God heard his servant like God so many times have told us that he would. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will go with you. And when you pray, the fervent prayers of the, of the righteous availeth much. Let, let's count uh, for a moment. Let's take into consideration how old Abraham and Sarah was when they had a baby. She was well stricken in year past the time of of, of, of bringing birth, but she gave birth. Uh, she thought it was going to, she thought it was strange. She thought it was a little funny. She even laughed. Uh, really didn't believe it at that time. But uh, the angel of God told her, said, what are you laughing for? In the time of life, you shall indeed have a baby. Uh, you shall indeed have a child. And now they went in uh, because of uh, Sarah. Uh, Abraham did go in uh, to his uh, chambermaid and had a, had a boy, uh, but that was not God's plan. Uh, he messed up. He made a mistake. But God didn't hold all of this against him and, uh, against him and uh, uh, began to not like Abraham. Abraham trusted God. And so therefore it was imputed unto him as righteousness and he was called a friend of God. Guess who else uh, believed God? She started, her countenance became much better. She started eating and all she done so far is prayed unto the Lord. So when she done all of that, it also tells me uh, that a godly mother trusts God's provision. In other words, what does that mean? It means when she went unto the Lord and poured out her heart and poured out her soul, uh, brother, she was meaning what she was saying. Uh, she was inquiring of the Almighty God, and she was actually uh, asking God, Lord, will you give me a son? I want a male child, and if you will give me a male child, I will promise you this much, uh, that I will wean him, and I will bring him up here unto you, and I will give him unto you for all of his life. And brother, God heard that prayer. And uh, God not only heard the prayer, he gave his uh, servant what she wanted, what she asked for. Now understand this, church, God does not uh, do that all of the time. Uh, sometimes it uh, uh, it may take a long time before uh, we uh, seem like we hear from God or see anything begin to happen from God. Uh, but we, if that be the case, uh, don't worry about it. Don't allow. Don't carry that around with you and allow the devil to cause you to start to doubt uh, because God has indeed heard your prayer. 
Uh, church, listen. Uh, let's just take this for uh, right now for a moment. How many people uh, that stand uh, sitting right here, that's a mom, how many of you have uh, prayed for your children? How many of you have prayed for your grandchildren? How many of you have prayed maybe uh, for somebody that you worked for with? Uh, how many have prayed uh, for their family members? How many of you moms uh, may have prayed uh, for uh, your friends and the people in the community, your neighbors? Uh, let me uh, encourage you with this. Uh, brother, we can see right here, right now, uh, to, I hope we can all see this uh, very clearly, uh, that Hannah also prayed. It may have not been for everything else, and that's not the point I'm thinking, uh, uh, trying to say and bring forth. Uh, the point I'm trying to make uh, here is uh, that, brother, you keep on uh, praying uh, because God will meet your provisions. He will meet what you need and he will indeed I don't care how long it takes uh, brother God hears your prayer and he will stir up the heart of your children it's totally up to them what they do uh, when God speaks uh, brother they can either stop uh, what they're doing and take heed uh, to the word of God and begin to feel troubled and begin to want to uh, start to search for an answer and God will deliver them uh, from their life of abomination. Uh, God will deliver them uh, from their life of sin and from their life of uh, distrust or not believing in God. Uh, there's atheist church who claim, I mean there's people who claim once upon a time uh, that they were atheists and they've been this way uh, for all of their life. I don't know if if you've ever watched movies uh, that's got uh, what seemed to be one evil actor Anthony Hopkins brother and sister uh, but he was an atheist for the longest time all of his life uh, but I read something briefly uh, uh, not too long ago I really don't know if it's true uh, because you can't believe everything you read especially if you get it depends on where it comes from uh, but he's uh, buddy, uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge, he's no longer an atheist. And he explains it in these words. Uh, being an atheist is like being in one room uh, with no windows at all. He said, tell me, who would want to live that kind of life uh, where you're in a room all by yourself uh, with no windows? He played a lot of evilness on TV, uh, but I'll tell you what. I trust and I hope and I pray uh, that it is true and I pray that it is uh, exactly as he said uh, No, not an atheist anymore he's come to know the Lord uh, if you don't know about this one uh, Alice Cooper uh, he proclaims Jesus Christ isn't that hard to believe just by looking at him uh, but he will proclaim uh, Jesus is the son of God uh, church, there's many people uh, just looking at. Uh, we wouldn't think uh, that they know too much or have anything to do uh, with God and, and uh, our Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Uh, but why does this happen? Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, whether it was the mom or not, it could have been the father, it could have been a brother, it could have been a friend or a sister, about somebody I will guarantee uh, you prayed on that person's behalf and brother just when they thought how many times have you said to yourself oh, there's no use oh, they're ne they'll never change oh, they are rooted and grounded in their evil ways they have allowed themselves uh, to believe a lie and God has simply turned them over to a reprobate mind uh, brother, let me tell you something. I believe with all of my heart, as long as we are living and have the breath of life within us, it's not too late. Uh, but the devil uh, will uh, cast a burden upon us and try if we allow him to. Uh, there's no sense in praying.
praying he'll say uh, it's not going to be answered uh, we got living proof right here uh, Satan uh, you may as well get behind all uh, not just me uh, but get behind every child of God in the universe because there's one thing uh, we know church uh, it is written thou shalt worship uh, the Lord thy God and him only uh, shalt thou worship uh, what does that mean I can't worship brother Miller I can't worship none of you I can worship the Lord God uh, with you and you can do the same with me uh, but brother I can't save you it takes God and his Holy Spirit uh, to save you that's why it's a brand new birth that's why we was called uh, being born again the old coat of uh, being the ways of the world two coats were before me and old and the new I could have either but what must I do uh, brother the old coat was earthly and terribly torn the new coat had never been worn what are those two coats uh, praise God uh, the old coat is the ways of the world uh, and the new coat is a robe of righteousness uh, that God will put on you himself uh, the Holy Spirit uh, will come down and dwell within you and I and we begin to see things in a completely different light in a completely different way it makes me happy uh, where I've never been happy it makes me uh, have hope uh, where I thought there was no hope it makes me have faith in God uh, where I didn't pay uh, too much attention to him at one time in my life and it give me a, a whole brand new reason uh, to live in this walkway of life uh, I died out to the old ways of the world I died out to sin I gave them both up I still make mistakes absolutely ain't gonna lie to nobody uh, but by God's grace through his strength and his power I'm not going to be one uh, that goes out here and knowing uh, something is not right in God's eyes and go ahead and do it anyway thinking I can say well I'll do this real fast like and then I'll ask the Lord to forgive me. Things don't work out that way all the time. Our ways are not God's ways. God's ways are not our ways. God's ways have always been, are, and always will be much, much higher than your ways and my ways. But we should see here at least those three right now that a mother and anybody else for that matter will go through trouble. They will see problems. Uh, but with a godly mom, she will pray. She won't start pointing a finger. She could have started pointing a finger and tell her, why don't you hush? Why don't you be quiet? No, I'm not going to help you change the baby. After the way you just talked to me, I mean, there's all kinds of scenarios we could put there. Uh, but Hannah just took her soul and her feelings uh, and, uh, and her prayers unto the Lord. She wanted something. She was. Uh, uh, she had hope, and she, she didn't just go unto the Lord. She went unto the Lord, knowing and believing and trusting that God would not only hear her, but He would give her and grant unto her her uh, in, uh, of what she inquired of. Now, uh, I've got two more here. All right. Alrighty. Now, what did Hannah do after God gave her Samuel? She winged the boy. She took him up there just like she told God she would do. She presented him unto God right along with an offering just like she told God she would do. And that tells me, now, 
uh, think just for a moment how much she must have missed her son uh, when she came home empty handed and knowing uh, that he wasn't going to be there with her uh, to live there uh, but no doubt uh, even though she had to miss her son we can tell she was a very godly woman a very godly mother uh, but church at the same time she kept her promise unto the Lord her God uh, God gave her what she wanted God gave her what she asked for and brother she kept her vow uh, that she vowed unto the Lord God and guess what everything's in sync there uh, between her her child and God her father and her husband no doubt in my mind uh, the, there's no doubt she went up there uh, continuing to go there every year with uh, 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 Fanina's and her uh, and her, uh, their husband and brother she got to see Samuel uh, all the time uh, it wasn't like you and I would do uh, but nevertheless this caused her to have joy uh, this caused her much happiness I have a son and everybody now knows it uh, brother watch what you say unto me and keep your mouth shut if you're going uh, to speak very proudly uh, because uh, God sees all of this uh, but she wasn't wrapped up in that stuff church she uh, kept her promise unto God and guess what happened Samuel grew up uh, under the uh, care and provision of the Lord and Samuel, uh, we all talk about Paul, 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 the Apostle Paul. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, I would venture to say Samuel was one of, if not the greatest prophet uh, that you'll read about in the Bible. Uh, of course, I don't mean Jesus Christ. Uh, Samuel was a very good man, a God-fearing man, and he kept the word of God. Uh, the, uh, the godly mother, she kept her promise to God. God. How many times have maybe uh, some of us here, if not all of us, including the dads, Lord, if you will this or if you will that, we will this and we will that. I give you my word. I make a vow to you. And as soon as it comes from God, he brings it to pass. We have forgotten all about our end of the bargain. How many times we're looking for trouble there? The Lord said, "Better it is better not to make a vow than it is to make a vow and not keep it. Don't open your mouth real fast and uh, get yourself in trouble with God. Why would you have that kind of desire? We do that a whole lot. Many, many people do. There's one more thing, church, that I want now, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, guess what that is showing me? A godly mom praises the Lord. No matter what they go through, no matter what they foresee or don't foresee, no matter what comes upon them, a godly mom will pray, continue to praise the Lord her God. Have you ever thanked God for... Uh, uh, sickness that come upon you. Some people have thanked God for that, believe it or not. You know why? Have you? I'll get there in a moment. Have you ever thanked God for the trouble that you faced, uh, for the problems that you've had to uh, work your way through? Have you ever thanked? Uh, that's not very common today. That's extremely unpopular today. No, preacher, I have not. Why would I thank God that I'm going through this? Let me tell you why the people 